Dr. James Talbot, T-A-L-B as in Bob O-T. I'm an adjunct professor at the School of Public Health, University of Alberta, a former Chief Medical Officer of Health for the Province of Alberta and the Territory of Nunavut. It's really an open letter to Albertans who are the subject of an experiment being carried out by uh, Premier Kenny and his government. Um, and what we're recommending is that the people of Alberta demand from the Premier the modeling that is behind the kind of decisions that they're making. So as it stands now, we're losing 10 Albertans a day, 100 a week, uh, because the government isn't prepared to take effective action to either significantly increase the number of people who've been vaccinated or to decrease transmission in the community. And both of those would be helpful. So if they're doing it on the basis of a model that says continuing to do nothing will eventually uh, result in the virus burning itself out because it will have infected everybody it can infect, we think that they should come clean with that and let us know, are they prepared to allow this number of people to die for two more weeks, for two more months, for four more months? And uh, I also think Alberta Health Services has a vested interest in knowing how long they're going to have to continue to cancel elective surgeries, how long they're going to have to continue to try to find uh, ICU beds, how long their staff are going to have to put up with this kind of killing pressure. We think it's a cold-blooded strategy for sure, but um, what we're seeing is that Alberta continues to have the lowest immunization rates in the country for people who are fully immunized and far more virus circulating in the community than anywhere else. We have 11 times as many cases per capita as Ontario does. Uh, and so, you know, anywhere else, uh, the government would be looking at those things and saying, we have to buy some time by slowing transmission in the community, and we have to up our game to get the message out that people need to be immunized. So, for instance, in BC, Ontario, Quebec, all of whom are doing significantly better than Alberta, the um, a vaccine passport is compulsory. It's, it's mandatory. And as a consequence, they're continuing to increase the number of people who are immunized. The Alberta government continues to piddle around with voluntary passport. So, you know, the, 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 and in, in response to our call for limited restrictions on community spread, not a lockdown as the Premier mischaracterized it. We just said, look, you know, the transmission is happening in places where you're indoors for more than an hour, not wearing a mask. So let's stop allowing those places to infect people. Uh, and the Premier has also ruled out doing that. So if his strategy isn't to stop transmission in the community and it isn't to improve immunization amongst the unimmunized, then he must be waiting for all the people who could still be infected to the virus to get infected, go to hospital or get the disease and recover. And then uh, those that haven't died will have some kind of immunity. That's the only strategy that they seem to be following. Just waiting to see if the uh, virus manages to infect everybody. I have thought about the cost, but the difficulty is that one, I'm not an economist, and two, it's not just going to be about dollars and cents. I mean, there are consequences to elective surgery being postponed. Some of that elective surgery is getting cancer biopsies. Some of that elective surgery will result in people having permanent bone deformities because they, you know, they ended up with a knee that wasn't replaced or a hip that wasn't replaced. We're getting to the point where people could come in with legitimate acute issues like a myocardial infarction, a heart attack, or a complication in pregnancy where there'll be consequences. So th that, there's the whole series of those that you'd have to try to cost out. But then in addition to that, you have the, the stress that's happening on staff. And unfortunately, you know, we've been calling this a killing stress on Alberta Health Services. And unfortunately, we lost a nurse, very dedicated nurse, very uh, compassionate nurse uh, who took her own life because that seemed 
a, like a better idea to her than to continue to work under the killing stress that she's been working under. And so there's going to be a cost associated with staff burnout, with people leaving the profession completely, and with Alberta being labeled as a place that as a healthcare worker, a nurse, respiratory tech, an anesthetist that you don't want to come to work because they, they deliberately put that kind of stress on the healthcare system and then refuse to do the things that would take the stress off. It's like a, a living nightmare. It's like, you know, you, you, you think you've fallen asleep and, you, and you're having this nightmare and you try to wake up from it and you can't. Um, you know, I have friends, uh, family, uh, people I care about who are on the front lines uh, I get a steady stream from them that people don't seem to understand and the government doesn't seem to understand how unbearable the situation is for them. I mean, it's a nightmare to think about having, uh, as some of my colleagues do on a regular basis, having to hold the phone for someone who's going to be intubated uh, and will not be able to speak to anyone and is likely going to die uh, as a consequence of that and have to hold the phone while they have spend their last moments talking to family who can't even be there in person. And uh, when you start multiplying that by 10 people or 15 people a day, 100 people a week, where that kind of thing is happening, and knowing that it's all preventable just makes it even more horrible. And, and you know, I've mentioned this before, but when I was training, I like to look back in the history of things. And I look back at the polio epidemics that used to hit Alberta. And there are pictures in the archives showing rows upon rows of iron lungs with young kids in them. And um, that was a disease that at the time there was no vaccine for. And um, there was very little that could be done to stop those outbreaks. And I remember thinking to myself how lucky we were that we were never going to see those scenes again. And it, it is incredible to me that here it is at the end of my career, and we're in a totally preventable uh, situation with a vaccine that works, and, and those scenes or their modern day equivalent are playing out uh, day after day. Okay. Um... Thanks, Jim. Is there is there anything else you want to add? I just want to add that, uh, you know, those people who haven't been immunized need to get immunized now because in two to three weeks, they may not be able to get a bed at all. So do it for self-interest. And I'd like to emphasize with Albertans that this is not the government's health care system. This is your health care system. And if you have ever been grateful for that system because it helped save a life of someone that you love or it helped reduce the amount of pain or made you a health healthier person after an injury or an illness um, it's time to for you to step up to the plate and protect that system now so that other people will be able to use it in the future so, you know, it's not the government system, it's your system and make sure, and it needs you to help protect it more than ever.